to you guys about braider etiquette and professionalism, okay? There was a video, and I'm gonna leave the link in the description, and hopefully I remember to allow it to slide up at the top of the screen, honey. And what it was, you guys, is that a braider and a client, it just went south real quick. So I'm just here to give you guys a couple of braider tips so that maybe if something like this was to ever happen to any of us, which I hope it does not, okay, we know how to handle it and what to do. So I'm going to start off with the fact that, hey, you guys, make sure you're checking out in the description below my braid hair for cash course or the replay, okay? And let's jump right into it with the braider etiquette because the truth of it is none of us know when something happens. We can say what we will do, but we don't know what we would actually really do. But let's start to get some of these things in mind so we know what to do if something like this was to happen. The first thing you need to be doing is screening the type of clients that you are going to be accepting in your braid business, okay? I've told you guys before and I'm gonna tell you again. Your business and your reputation is not worth a little funky ass $65. I'm sorry, okay? If you know a client is rude, disrespectful, asking too many damn questions, you have a right to decline and refuse that client. You do not need to accept every client that comes in, honey. Your business should be like Macy's, not the 99 cent store, okay? You don't need to accept every person that, that hits you up at the DM, with the PM, that emails you, that text message you. It's not worth losing the integrity of your business. So you need to be screening clients. Think about things like communicate your prices effectively, okay? You need to have policies and procedures when you're dealing with your clients. They need to know your refund policy. They need to know your running late policy. Do you take it? Do you do deposits? They need to know if you allow people who drink and smoke either at your house or when you come to them, okay? You need to have policies and procedures because it gets dicey when you just show up to somebody's house and they don't know your lay of the land. You didn't set no rules, no guidelines. So screen your clients, communicate your prices properly, have rules, have regulations, and again, you have a right to decline or refuse a client. Next thing, you need to be thinking about always keeping it professional, always keeping it business. Do not, I repeat, do not fraternize with your clients. Jen, you brought probably like Jen. What does fraternize mean? Do not sleep with your clients, drink with your clients, smoke with your clients, okay? I can say this, I, I messed up, okay? When you start to fraternize with your clients, okay? People tend to think you cool, right? That's why on here I say be cordial with your clients. You're not their best friend. You're not their homegirl. You're not their day one. You are there to handle business. And the reason why I suggest you do not fret, first of all, I'm going to let my other video slide up here at the top. When one, somebody tried to pay me in weed, okay, or I'll leave it in the description below. Number two, I started messing with one of my clients. It gets dicey because when you start be friends with becoming friends with people and you and your clients cool, it starts to get real blurry and it's no longer business. It turns into a friendship and most people don't want to charge their friends full prices. Most people won't have deposits for their friends. Most people won't have rules and regulations for their friends. That's why I'm saying keep it business. Do not fraternize with your friends clients okay no they're not your home girl no they're not your bestie no they're not hey friend no 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 you can play like that if you want to but then if you do you run the risk of not having a client respect your braiding business and now they're starting to do things that you may not like okay so keep it business and the last thing i'm going to recommend is always interact with your clients with integrity okay Refrain from cussing out your clients. Refrain from blaming your clients, okay? Refrain from being rude to your clients. Communicate th with them in a timely manner. They should know when their appointment is. They should know if you're running late. They should know if something has changed, okay? And if you have a client that is of age, you need to be communicating with that client. You don't need to be communicating with their friend. You don't need to be communicating with their boyfriend. You don't need to be communicating with their homegirl. You need to be communicating with that client if they're of age, right? Age 18 and over, so that you can make sure that you and the client are on the same page as far as their hairstyle, as far as how much you're gonna charge, as far as anything else, okay? And remember to keep your client informed, keep them up to date. What's going on? Is anything changed? 
I need for everybody to start taking our braiding business a little bit more seriously, okay? So this is what I need for you guys to do. Drop down in the comments, let me know. Have you ever had a bad interaction or not so great interaction with a client and what did you do? See guys, I hope this was helpful and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye y'all.